I'm just gonna do it normal. Hey everybody, and welcome to Meals with Melissa. I, first of all, apologize. Normally I do this on a landscape view, and I don't know what it is. Facebook's being super weird right now. Maybe they've got the virus, I don't know. Uh, but I've got a great meal for you today. I know right now we're in a situation where some of us are having to be really creative, whether it's because we can't get everything that we need. Um, you know, I, I get it. So, however, that doesn't mean that we, number one, should be eating healthy because I think that's really super important right now. You know, I just did a video on why it's so important to eat healthy because that has to support your immune system. So if you're eating a lot of sugar, which by the way, suppresses your immune system for several hours, um, if you're eating a bunch of junk, it's not gonna support your body's ability to take care of those things. So make sure that you're eating well and that you're doing the best you can because that's really all we can do at this, at this point. So I'm going to make low carb pizza bites. Now, I know that we all love pizza, but, and really honestly, it's not even that hard to make them low carb and gluten free. We just omit the crust, right? But these are a little more fun. It's somewhere as a cross between meatballs and pizza bites. Um, you know, like I said, it's not a lot of ingredients and so super easy to make. So I'm going to make a half batch today. Got my little recipe right here. Like I said, it's kind of just a weird view because normally I have it to this direction kind of freaking me out just a little bit, um, but it's totally doable. So we're going to start with, um, again, I'm gonna give you the half rest, I'm doing the half recipe today. I will give you the full recipe because a lot of us like to make that full batch. Benefit is you can stick it in the fridge and you can eat on it for a couple of meals um, or a couple of days, whatever works for you, and that's great because again, most of us don't have a lot of time for food prep, so the more that you can make um, and be able to spread that out through a couple of meals, it's great. So it calls for Italian sausage, but my favorite is the chicken sausage that I get locally. Now, I know that that's really, it doesn't kind of really exist um, on the East Coast, so you might have to be a little creative or just use some Italian sausage. I like this because it's a little less fat. Now, fat is not bad, um, but it allows me, I just like the flavor. Like, I just, I like chicken, so that really works well for me. Now, all they had at the store was classic. Normally, I get Italian, um, but we're going to throw some Italian spices in there, so it's really, really not a big deal, so I've got that. Now, when you make this, this needs to already be cooked, right? So I've already done that. I've cooked my sausage this morning, crumbled it up, I put it in a bowl, and to that I'm going to add two ounces of cream cheese softened. Now, I tried this multiple ways <laughs> to see the best way to mix this together, because I'm gonna throw these two together, um, and really, you just honestly, it's gonna be use your hands. Um, <laughs> so make sure your hands are clean, <laughs> which you should be doing right now anyway, I would have thought that was common sense, but apparently that's not because we're being told over and over and over to do so. I think we're all five. Um, okay, so I've already got my my oven preheating um, on 350, and I'm just gonna mix this up. Now I do have multiple ingredients here, but you gotta mix these two first together because of course the cream cheese is gonna take a second, and you want it to be pretty much coating the majority of the sausage. Um, so do that really quick, then I'm gonna wash my hands and add the other ingredients. Now, again, this has been an interesting one because some of the ingredients, I had to look up the conversion of the half batch because third of a cup is a really, really interesting measurement. So, uh, that's what I did today. Okay, so I've got that mixed up. Now, again, these, this is a little higher fat um, recipe, so if you're doing keto or very low, low carb, this is a, a really good one. Now, I do want to tell you that just because you're doing keto or you are, because sometimes we think, oh, well, I'm doing high fat, low carb, and I really don't need to keep track of my calories because my body treats the macros differently, which is true. Problem being is you still can't overdo it. Like if you just eat tons and tons and tons of fats, your body will store it. So again, you've gotta be reasonable and you gotta, I really think it's a benefit to learn the biology of how that works versus just believing what other people tell you. Um, that really drives me crazy when people are like, well, I, you know, I took this pill because they said it was gonna work. How? How's it gonna work? Does it even make sense? Or are they just filling you full of, you know, stupid information that doesn't mean anything? You know, sometimes I have to remind my son even that just because it's on the internet doesn't make it true. So, okay, to that I'm going to add two tablespoons and two teaspoons of coconut flour. That's where the weird amounts come in. I've already measured that, but that is half of a third of a cup. Um, now, sorry about that. You could actually use almond flour, but according to the instructions, it won't turn out quite as fluffy. So I recommend coconut flour. And these days you can get coconut flour even in regular stores. Walmart even carries it. Not my favorite store, but right now, you, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Um, so I'm gonna add that. I'm also going to add one fourth teaspoon of baking powder. Again, that's my, that is my uh, raisin agent. Okay. 
Um, I'm also going to add a half a teaspoon of minced garlic. Now, I guess you could do fresh garlic if you really want to and, you know, mince it yourself. Um, I don't want to take that much time, so I'm actually going to use minced garlic um, that we get at Costco, another crazy place right now. Um, I'm going to add half, a half a teaspoon of that to my mix. And I love garlic, so if I get a little more than I'm supposed to, I'm not going to complain. Okay. I'm also going to add a half teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Again, that's kind of where the pizza flavoring comes in. And I do somewhere have another set of teaspoons that are dry. Got a lot going on over here today. Now, I did make this, so I do know that it works. Because, you know, I've had some epic fails in the past. One of those being a low-carb Nutella. Doesn't work. Don't even bother trying it, guys. It just doesn't work out. Okay, so I'm adding that. All right. Then you're also going to add half of three beaten eggs, large eggs. Now, again, it's weird. That ends up being six tablespoons um, or about half of three quarters of a cup-ish. Um, I tried to actually tablespoon it and the eggs, even beaten, want to stick together. So yeah, that just didn't really work out for me. Um, but there it goes. Okay. All right. And to that, I'm going to add three quarters cup of mozzarella cheese. See, doesn't that sound amazing? Mozzarella cheese, who could be mad at that? Okay, I am also gonna add just a smidgen of salt. I know that the sausage does um, have some sodium to it, um, but just for a little bit of flavoring because we don't actually add anything with any extra salt besides that. So I'm gonna mix that up. Okay, again, I'm just gonna use my hands just because it's a whole lot easier than trying to use a spoon. Trust me, it's just not gonna work. Um, you know, if you've ever made dough before, this is kind of what it's like. Now, after this, I'm actually gonna throw it in the fridge for about 10 minutes to chill, because if I don't, what's gonna end up happening is while I bake it, it's gonna flatten out and I'm not gonna get my little meatballs that I'm looking for. So, I already have some that's in there, so I'm gonna throw this one in and pull that one out and show you what to do with it. Now, I've already lined um, a pan with my favorite tool of all time, which is parchment paper. You could also use a silicone mat or you can grease it. I really don't like greasing stuff like that. Number one, uh, depends on what you're greasing it with because vegetable oil is horrible for you, um, including canola oil. Canola oil just means Canadian oil, guys. It's the same garbage. Um, unfortunately, because it is processed with chemicals, uh, it is just really not good for you. It actually can alter your DNA and not in a good way. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands. Let me grab the other one. Lots of hand washing today. Par for the course, right? No biggie. I've um, got plenty of, plenty of soap at my house. Now, I do believe right now that there is a special hell for all of those people that have sheds full of toilet paper so that the rest of us are freaking out just a little bit. Now, I'm prepared. I have wet wipes. We're cool. You can also shower. But I really find that this is stupid. Um, and I wish that it was a time that people were really more supporting each other. Um, it really bothers me. Uh, I get survival. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, but there's two ways you can go with this. So, all right. So let me grab that out of the, I'm gonna put this in and grab the other one out of the fridge. Now, because I love to bake, and in the past I just stocked up on supplies, I have this great little scooper. Um, that's gonna work really well for shaping and sizing our meatballs. So I'm gonna grab my pan that's already got my parchment paper, okay? And I'm just gonna scoop them out. And again, the fat, the benefit too of leaving this in the fridge is that it will allow all the moisture to absorb um, into the coconut flour uh, so that you have, it sticks together, right? You want it to be able to stick together. So I'm just gonna scoop these in little round amounts so they look like meatballs on my parchment paper. And I'm gonna throw them in the oven at 350 for about 18 to 20 minutes. Now, of course, that depends on the size that you make your meatballs. Just watch them. Wait till they turn golden brown, okay? So I'll show you what they look like in just a second because I've already made a batch. You know I do that in advance. And usually I let my family test them. I haven't quite done that this time around, but I know that they all love the, this chicken sausage, so I don't think that that's gonna be a problem. Now, how many do these make? Really depends on what size you make your meatballs. Uh, the recipe that I got off Pinterest um, says that they were able to make 30, but again, what size is that? I don't know. Again, a lot of people also ask me, well, what are the macros to that? Well, put the recipe in my fitness pal, break it down into how many servings you get out of it, 
and figure it out. It's not that difficult of a thing to do. And they have a whole little part there that you can actually program in recipes and save them so that if you make it more than once, you don't have to enter in all of the different ingredients every time. Okay, so I'm gonna throw this in the oven, set my timer, and let me show you what it's gonna look like when it comes out, and then I'm gonna show you how to serve it. All right, super easy, throw this in the oven. There it goes, set my timer. There we go, all right. So, made these ones a little bit earlier. They're good to go. They're golden, you know, golden brown on top. They flatten out a little bit. I probably should chill them just a smidgen longer, um, but I really wanted to get in the oven so I could show you what they're gonna look like. Now, I've loved pizza since I was a kid. My taste buds have changed since I've gotten a little bit older. I'm a little more picky, but, well, <laughs> depends on what we're talking about. I do actually like onions and mushrooms on my pizza now, and I didn't as a kid. Um, but I'm a little more picky as to if I'm going to eat something, especially if it's an unhealthy version, I'm really picky, because it better be the best thing I've ever had, like ever. Um, but these days, I try to make healthier versions. That's why we do this. So I have a marinara sauce, a class, it says classic marinara pasta sauce. Um, I got this from my local store called Yolks, which tends to have a really decent health food section. Fred Meyer does too, um, but I got one that is no sugar added. Now it does, if you look at the label, it does have sugar on it, but that's gonna come from the tomatoes because I've already read the label, doing a whole video on that guys, I've already read the label, I know that there is no extra sugar added at all because if, it, if the ingredient list adds anything and an O-S, O-S-E, it contains sugar, it just does. Like they hide it, right? Um, but this does not. So I'm gonna use this classic marinara sauce um, as my pizza sauce and either you could either dip it or you can put it over like meatballs and eat it like that. So doesn't that sound amazing? So again, you guys, there is a way to stay healthy right now. Please don't use this time and, and the situation as an excuse. Use it as a reason. I find right now, especially if you're home like me because you really can't work, all the gyms are closed, um, this is a great time to practice some massive self-care, really be good to yourself. You know what, I have books, we have the internet. Electricity is not shut off. I'm gonna do some research, I'm a huge nerd, right? Huge geek. Um, I'm gonna do some research, figure some things out that I've been wanting to study and learn about, including genetic nutrition, which I find fascinating. Um, Things are coming, technology. So use this as a great time to better yourself. Don't use this as an excuse to just let things go. Have an incredible day, you guys. There will be more recipes coming. If you haven't noticed, I've also been putting up different ways you can work out at home. Work out at home. I also wanna start giving you some great activities that can be boredom busters, especially if the kids are starting to drive you crazy and you just need something new to do. So be watching for those. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got some great videos coming out. Even though my Miami trip was cut short, that's coming as well as how to read food labels effectively and know really whether they're healthy or not because a lot of it's a scam. So have a great day, you guys, and we'll see you next weekend. Bye now.